any time you enter the abdomen for surgery, the entire abdomen should be clipped and prepped in the event of an urgent need to enlarge your abdominal approach. The fur is clipped from the pubis to one centimeter cranial to the xiphoid process, and roughly a clipper blade's width lateral to the teats on either side. To get a close shave without cutting the skin, the hair is first clipped in the same direction as the growth pattern, and then, once it's a little shorter and more manageable, it's clipped against the grain. Stretching the skin with your opposite hand will help decrease the risk of clipper trauma. Once we're happy with our clip, the clipped fur is then carefully vacuumed from the patient in the table to help decrease the risk of contamination in surgery. After you vacuum, you may find some areas that have a little bit of hair left, and so you might want to go back and fine tune some areas and clean them up a bit, particularly where your incision will be. In the induction area, an initial dirty prep is performed. The purpose of this prep is to scrub away dirt and debris and to start contact time with the chlorhexidine scrub. For this scrub, non-sterile gloves can be used. Alternating rounds of chlorhexidine scrub and isopropyl alcohol or sterile saline are applied to the clip surgical field. For the dirty prep, the direction of the scrub is not as important as it is in the sterile prep, which you'll see next. The point is just to get as much dirt, debris, and hair off of the surgical site as possible before getting into the OR. The dirty scrub is continued until the gauze wipe away relatively clean. Depending on how dirty the dog is, this typically takes between three to five rounds of alternating scrubs with chlorhexidine and isopropyl alcohol or sterile saline. Before transport to the OR, a chlorhexidine soaked gauze is placed over the surgical site to keep it clean and continue with contact time. The patient is moved to the OR, positioned, fitted with warming devices, and fastened into place. The surgical table is then elevated to the appropriate height for the surgeon, and the transport gauze are removed from the surgical site. And now it's time for your sterile scrub. Okay, for your sterile scrub, you'll wear sterile gloves, and you have sterile containers with sterile chlorhexidine scrub, and sterile alcohol soaked gauze. To keep the container sterile, you should only ever reach in with your non-dominant hand. Sterile gloves are worn using an open glove technique, with care taken not to contaminate the outside of the gloves. Your non-dominant hand is designated as the clean hand, which can repeatedly reach into these sterile containers, and your dominant hand is designated as the scrub hand, which does all the dirty work. A fresh gauze is taken from your clean hand each time. When performing a sterile scrub, gauze should never drag from haired skin back towards the shaved and prepared area, as this will drag dirt and debris from the haired area back into the surgical site. Notice how once one edge of the gauze touched the haired skin, the gauze is rotated to keep that edge always in contact with the haired or dirtiest edge. If the gauze was not rotated, the edge that was in contact with the haired skin would then be dragged right in the middle of your prep site and bring dirt and debris and hair from that outside edge into the cleanest area of your prepped site. We'll typically let the chlorhexidine sit on the skin for about 30 seconds or so in between rounds of chlorhexidine and alcohol scrubs. Next, clean hand grabs a stack of sterile alcohol gauze and your scrub hand, then uses those gauze to wipe away the chlorhexidine from the patient's skin. And again, you can see gauze always go in one direction once they hit that haired skin. They don't go back towards the sterile prep site unless that edge is rotated to keep it in contact with the haired skin. All motions begin at the center of the surgical site and work their way out from there. And now we repeat this process, continuing with alternating rounds of chlorhexidine and alcohol scrubs. Two to three repetitions of chlorhexidine scrubs, contact time, and alcohol scrub are performed until a total of five minutes of chlorhexidine contact time has elapsed. The final scrub is always alcohol to remove chlorhexidine, which is irritating to the skin if left to dry. Now, the surgical site is ready to be isolated for surgery.